I, I do want to get into this uh, Joanna and Zhang fight. And I know the stories were coming out after the fight. Everybody thought that was one of the greatest fights they ever seen. And it was. It was absolutely a great, great fight. Five rounds of championship MMA fighting. Something that you don't see anymore. I mean, these, these ladies were killing each other. A lot other. of people didn't think it was going to go five rounds. No, I didn't. Nobody expected that. To Zang be never went five epic. rounds. No. Nobody thought that that was going to be as epic as it was. It was great. It was a very close fight. But I did believe that they had it right. Zang was the winner. But Joanna put on a good fight. It was back and forth. And, and I'll tell you this right now. If Zang didn't do what she did in the fifth round, Joanna probably would have won the fight. Zang won the fifth round. And, and, and that's championship rounds. If you, if you can win those championship rounds, you're going to win the fight. John Jones did it against Reyes. Reyes won the first two rounds. But the last three rounds went to John Jones because he knew he had to step up his game, and he did. He outfought Reyes, and Reyes got tired, and he got caught a couple of times, and it had him stumbling, and he got worried about the power of John Jones. When you go from three rounds to five rounds, that is a ridiculously huge difference. That yes. People say, oh, it's just, it's just ten minutes. Just ten minutes. Listen. A.K.A. Conor McGregor has no stamina whatsoever. Okay? And I don't want to hear it from any of you Conor McGregor fans that he does, because he doesn't. Absolutely zilch. Go look at all his fights in the past. Anytime the fights went past three rounds, he either lost or he got lucky and he won. And I'll, I'll, I'll bring up the luckiness because he did lose that Nate Diaz fight. He did. That second fight, he lost that fight. And the fact that they gave it to him is a joke. And the UFC, again, is protecting their big superstar fighters. They've been doing it for a long time. Who has Conor fought? Let's be honest. Who has Conor fought... In the last three years, what good fighter has he fought in the last three years? Besides Khabib. Besides Khabib. Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo. Did he fight Jose Aldo in the last three years? I don't I think, think that's he did. roughly around three years. Uh, really? Because roughly. Jose Aldo was not 100% healthy when he fought him. And, and he came well, out and said. He took it. a fight. He took the fight. Took the fight. Absolutely did. It. And he got, knocked fight. Out. He, he got knocked out, but he wasn't 100% healthy. And we all know he was an 100. He had a shoulder. He had a shoulder injury, but he still went into the fight. Eddie Alvarez was a decent. Uh, it was fighter. not a shoulder. It was a rib. He had a broken rib. Eddie, Alvar- rib. Eddie Alvarez was a decent fighter. Oh, Eddie Alvarez was highly overrated. I've always thought Al- Eddie Alvarez was one of the most overrated champions uh, champions that UFC ever had. He is a. Go look at Eddie Alvarez when he wasn't in the UFC. He the guy, the guy isn't had, a great he fighter. Had a, he had a decent Bellator career. Go look at his record in, a, in his UFC career. There, there, I, I was never uh, an Eddie Alvarez fan. Never. And I knew Conor was going to whip his ass in Madison Square Garden. Everybody knew he was going to whip his ass. Conor was just a bigger fighter. He was the bigger fighter. And Eddie Alvarez looked like he was an anorexic fighter in that fight. He looked so much skinnier than Conor. Go look at him. Go look at the fight. <laughs> Conor was a giant compared to him in that fight. He was a giant. It was... No chance in hell Eddie Alvarez was going to win that fight. And don't bring up Poirier when he fought Poirier four or five years ago. Poirier is another... When which one fought Poirier? They both fought Poirier. You know who I'm talking about. Who, Conor Conor? McGregor. When he fought Poirier. And I'll tell you this, and I'll go back to that fight as well. And I watched the... I actually watched that instant replay of that fight two days ago. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you this right now. Poirier, as much as they were going back and forth, Poirier wanted nothing to do with Conor McGregor. I don't care what he says and all this other stuff. And Poirier can call this show right now, or I'll actually reach out to Poirier because I, I really don't care. I'll tell him right to his face. <laughs> I'll tell him right to his face. He knew that he wasn't winning that fight. I knew he wasn't going to win that fight. Connor has been put in the octagon against fighters that he matched up well against. Is that, once again, we're going to do this again. Is that Connor's fault? No, it's Dana White. So you can't knock Connor. Uh, I'm knocking. Connor. You just don't like Connor to begin no, with. No, I'm that knocking. Help. No, first of all, I I don't like Connor for many many reasons, and, and it's not it's not just because I don't like his fighting. I think he's a great fighter. Connor McGregor is a great fighter. He has one of the best, most deadliest left uh, left left shots, left hooks in, in UFC history. The guy once he catches you, he knocks you out. Mm-hmm. We know what he's capable of doing. Stand up. The guy is not a good ground fighter, and, and that's why I'm very surprised that nobody tried. And he's very good at defending the ground, you know, defending somebody taking him down. Mm-hmm. But every time somebody takes him down, when Nate Diaz took him down, he couldn't do anything on the ground against Nate. 
And, and to me, Conor McGregor is, again, an overrated fighter. He's been an overrated fighter for the UFC for many, many years. You know why he's an overrated fighter? Because he can sell the product. He can sell his product. He is a great promoter. And that's why him as a promoter is going to go – he's going to make more money as a promoter than he is as a fighter. Mm-hmm. And, and because he knows how to sell his product. And trust me, he will find fighters that are just like him who open their mouths and don't shut up. And that's, <laughs> that's Conor McGregor. But going back to Joanna and, and Zhang, I, I think both fighters are absolutely incredible. And, and, and I'll tell you this right now. I want to see a huge card. I want to see the UFC bring back, when, when they're ready to bring it back, I don't want to see this UFC 250 where your, your, your lead fight is, is Ferguson versus, and I'm not, I'm not going to take a shot at him because... I don't, I, I don't think he's worthy enough because he's supposed to fight Conor McGregor. Um, Gagey. Gagey. He was supposed to fight Conor McGregor. Right. Conor would have kicked his ass. And that's just – and I'm not uh, – it would have been – it would have been uh, – Stylistically, the matchup does not bowl match. Ball for Gagey. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't match. But uh, hold on. As Speedy is writing something. Anthony, are you surprised he is number one on mm-hmm. Errol's most – Hated athletes list. No, actually, Speedy, I would say this. You were surprised the other day, and you actually questioned, wait, he said something complimentary about Conor McGregor? He just did it just now, too. I compliment he's him. St- he's, starting to, he's starting to sway. No, no I'm not he's swaying. He's starting to I'm sway not swaying. to the dark side. Guys, I am not swaying. He's starting to I'm sway not swaying to the dark, to the dark, side. The dark side. Speedy, no, I'm not. Along with whatever nope. paraphernalia he nope. wants you to promote selling, yes, you're going to get Errol vibrators in, in stores near you're you. You're going to get Errol in one of the Conor McGregor. Freaking high water pant leg suits. I almost knocked my mic down. He's gonna rock. <laughs> that's the, see, that's just it. I, him thinking that he was gonna be in a schmedium uh, suit totally schmedium? got him out of it. Is what that would what you, you call, call it? it? How t- skin tight is that damn thing? <laughs> okay, listen, I'm Italian. I know how to wear suits. You don't wear suits that way. I'm sorry. Wow. Anyways, uh, getting back, what are you? What are your thoughts with this? This um, Joanna, Joanna Zane part two. It's a little. There's a little bit of a concerning port, part of it, especially after all the damage that they took in that five-round fight the first time. Mm-hmm. Because just like you see in some professional boxing fights that we've seen over the years, you know, when you point out, like, um, the Mickey Ward, Gotti thing. Right. You know what I mean? You see some of these fights that become trilogies where ultimately it turns into fights where they just beat the hell out of each other mercilessly. Mm-hmm. Mercilessly. Uh, just... Maliciously? Maliciously. There Thank you, go. you. There you go. Yeah, I, got, I got stuck there for a second. You know, I didn't have to move the little pin on the record there. But ultimately, I think it would be a great fight. I know that would make more money mm. than any of these, like, paper mache fight cards that they're putting together now. They need that fight card to happen. I would not push it that far. I wouldn't push it that to, to be done that quickly mm-hmm. until everybody – I mean, when you saw just the photos after the fight – when somebody's not not cheeks, not face, but when somebody's skull is deformed to the point where it looked like, not to make a joke about it, the closest thing you saw to this was the Elephant Man. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying it as a joke. I mean, it literally, you saw Joanna's skull. She looked bad. Was distorted. Yeah. It wasn't about swelling and having hematomas yeah. like Mark Hamlinek did against Aldo that one time. She looked you bad. You literally had mm-hmm. someone's head. Mm-hmm. Deformed. When you see something like that, it's concerning, especially when they talk about concussions and everything like that. Right. Because that is ultimately CTE too. That right there. The other thing that you have to worry about, because we've talked about this in the past, when somebody has a bad loss, something changes with the fighters. They lose a little something. You hope that it doesn't turn into a situation like the Frankie Edgar thing with Gray Maynard. Right. They had a whole bunch of battles, and then that last fight was ultimately just a dominant performance by Frankie and Gray just was done. Mm-hmm. Sometimes these rematches, sometimes they go to the well one too many times. Could, would I love to see a rematch? Absolutely. Would I love to see a trilogy? The fan in me would say absolutely. The coach <laughs> and business side of this guy, part of the guy would probably say no. It would be concerning to me to see, especially if the, if the rematch goes another five rounds like that. Mm. That was a great fight. That was his, and as you as we've said once before, no matter who won that fight, whether you wanted Joanna or you wanted Zhang, regardless of who would have won that fight, you wouldn't have been disappointed. Mm. That's how good of a fight it was. So. 
Well, Shaquille O'Neal was on Ariel Awani's show recently, and he speaks out. Shaquille O'Neal is a four-time NBA champion, and he really has attributed, attributed his Hall of Fame success to mixed martial arts. MMA mm-hmm. is the reason I became a champion. Shaq was training in MMA. Now, I would not want to see him in a ring, let me tell you, or an octagon or anything. A big man like that. Did you, uh, there was, they actually showed us still one time when he made a guest appearance in a battle royal on WrestleMania. And Jeez. he was standing across I remember that. from the big yep. show. Yep. And I mean... The size, the size, the, the size comparison wasn't that big. Mm-mm. wasn't that big, and everybody went nuts. I think that's when it was uh, in Houston. I think it was. Yeah, but the big show is like seven three, seven four. But when you saw them, pretty much like nose to nose. Yeah. I mean, it was it was nice. Mm. I mean, I would have I would have paid money to see that. Even if I mean, even if it is just wrestling, I would. Yeah, money. I, I don't think Shaquille O'Neal would. Uh, I think Shaquille O'Neal would whip the big show's ass. I think I, I, Sha- I think Shaquille O'Neal. Not. I mean, I know we're dealing with MMA, but I think Shaquille O'Neal is unbelievably underrated as a basketball mind in the NBA. One of the top 10 basketball players of all time. I don't I, care could you I... imagine if you put him in some kind of all, like front office capacity in some of these teams that no, need help? I don't want, I do not want Shaquille O'Neal you running my organization. No. I think he would actually be pretty good with player development. No. I do not Shaq? want Shaq, Charles that Barkley. Winning attitude? I was hearing the Knicks were going to bring in Kenny... Uh, uh, Kenny Johnson uh, from, from the TNT team. I do not want Kenny Johnson. I heard that the Knicks were going to interview him as a coach. I do not want Kenny Johnson there. I don't want any of these guys next to my team. And no offense to Shaquille O'Neal. I think he's one of the greatest centers of all time. And I'm sure he would have been a great MMA fighter because he was very athletic. He was unbelievably athletic. But I do not want him running my organization. That's for I didn't say sure. running. I said Having something to do with player development. I, I think he'd be a, a friend. He'd be a nice he's mentor. Yeah, I think he's, he would be a nice mentor. I think he'd be making jokes and cracking jokes. That's what I think he'd be doing. And he's very good at that. You see him on TNT. He's great. And I, it's funny. I, I bumped into Ernie Johnson, who run, who is the mm-hmm. lead on that show. Yeah. And at the, um, at the airport when I was heading down to Miami, and he was so gracious, such a nice guy, Ernie Johnson. Um, I, t- I asked him, I said, what is it, what is, what is it like working on – both sides with Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Charles Barkley. Especially when they get pissed off at each other. And he told me, he says, Charles is one of the funniest, but Shaquille O'Neal is on a whole nother level. He says, Shaq is on a whole nother level. He says, both guys are the generosity and the people that they are on and off the screen or off the mm-hmm. camera. These guys are not only best friends or good friends, they're great friends. And these are two people that absolutely hated each other in, yeah. when they played against each other. They were fighting. How many times did we see them fight when, on when the Barclay court? When Barkley was on Houston? Yeah. That, How that many times did we see Two brawls. They had two brawls. Two times they fought. It, I, and I'll tell you this right now. They're so funny together. That is must-see TV when, when you see these two guys talk about basketball. Both of them are just two funny, funny guys. But... Um, it's interesting. It's interesting that Shaquille O'Neal would speak out for MMA and give MMA all the credit, but of course, ESPN blows it up and then gives you a clip that doesn't really sell what he is trying to say or what the clip, is, what the story is of trying to sell. So, but uh, Shaquille O'Neal says that uh, MMA absolutely helped his career, took his career to a whole nother level, where he started winning championships in 2000 and absolutely changed everything as the most dominant player in basketball for almost seven or eight years. Um, a phenomenal basketball player. And and I'll tell you this right now. One of the top ten greatest basketball players. And, yes, I would take him over Kobe Bryant any day. And I love Kobe. Shout out to Kobe Bryant and his family. Um, hopefully they're okay with the COVID-19. Um, Kobe Bryant was a great basketball player. But uh, Shaquille O'Neal was on a whole nother level. Uh, I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. Anyways, we have about 15 minutes left of our show. So, I want to know your opinion. And I'm, I'm reading stories, and I'm going through different MMA stories. And there are not many MMA stories. There really isn't. And, and this is actually the whole interview over here, but I'm not playing the whole M- interview. What are – now, I understand that Bellator is not doing any more pay-per-views. Right. And, right. And maybe because they weren't selling. They, no. Their, their, one, their one or two attempts at a pay-per-view was just bad. 